Hello and welcome back. Evan Daly here coming at you with another Blender tutorial. In this one I want to show you how to do a Borderlands style character intro. Um, typically in these intros there's a lot of action and animation. I'm not going to go quite that in depth. Um, I'm not even going to go into character posing. I assume that you already know how to rig and pose a character. Um, and then we're going to take that into Unity and create a static scene um, a little bit more like this. Um, so if that sounds interesting please keep watching otherwise I'll see you in the next video. Um, so, first of all, um, I'm assuming that you have a character that you can um, pose somehow. And so th this is my character. I already moved him into place. And then I saved the character. I went into Unity. And now he looks like this. Um, and to make him take that pose, when you first import the character into Unity, uh, it's probably going to come in with, with a standard T-pose. Um, like... He's probably going to come in looking like this. Um, so when you pose your character, make sure you save that as an animation. And then go into Unity, and you'll have to create a um, an animator controller. Um, so that's what I did here. I created an animator controller called Ninja2. And then I took the animation, my MetaRig action, which has the pose. And then I dropped that into the um, controller. And then when I put the controller on my game object... Um, now he takes that pose, rather th rather than the default pose that he came in with. Um, so I haven't posed correctly, I have just a blank wall behind him. And now we're going to try to create um, something like this. So for the text, I'm just going to open up a new Blender file. And Unity has some, some built-in user interface stuff that we could use. I'd rather actually have like three-dimensional text like this. And that's just going to give us more control. So to create the text, I'm going to hit Shift-A and create text. Now to edit that, I can just tab into edit mode and say Shuriken. That's what I'm naming my character. Tab back into object mode. And now to convert this to an actual mesh object, because right now it's just it's text, which is made of splines. Um, so I'm going to hit Alt-C, and it, that gives me the option to convert this to mesh or... Um, yeah, whatever. I want to click on this one. So now I have an actual um, mesh object. I'm going to hit A and E to extrude. And now it, it seems like it's being shaded kind of weirdly, and that's because the normals are backward. Um, if, I, if I go into my end panel and click on one of these options, you can see the normals are actually facing inside. Um, point one... See, if I go into wireframe view, you can tell that the, the normals are facing the wrong direction. So I'm just going to hit A, Control N, and now all the normals are facing outside, and it's being um, shaded correctly. So I'm going to save this as text1. Now we can just drop that into our scene. I'm going to hold Control as I rotate this to snap it. And so this is what it looks like at the moment. And again, I'm trying to make it look like this one. So I'm going to move my camera. To about there. And R for scaling. Shrink it down. And uh, I don't like the way this is rotating. I, I want to make sure that I'm in local rotation mode. Alright, so we're making some progress. 
Uh, it's it's still not quite there. Um, I like the way that this text is broken up. So why don't we just simply do that to our object here? Tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit one, actually seven and five, for a top or with a graphic. I don't need to see the normals anymore, so I'm just going to disable that view here. And Z for wireframe and B for box select. And I can just move these around. And save one more time. And already it's starting to look a lot better. I'm going to scale this. Uh, and it, it's currently not unwrapped, so I'm going to hit A to select everything, U, and um, project from view. And now what that did is just gave us a simple UV unwrapping. And I have a few different um, options that I've created for my material. I'm not going to go into the material creation in this video. Um, I'm just going to pick one that I like from my collection. Alright, so that's looking pretty decent. I'm going to save the scene and I'll just call this Borderlands Intro 1 and I still want it to look more like like this with the interesting background so I'm going to, I'm going to go back to Blender create a new file and I'm just going to work on this default cube. Now for creating the background we're just going to use a simple splat for that, um, I found this ink blot online. I opened it up in GIMP, and then I essentially inverted the color. So everything white here is actually alpha, so that's nothing. And then the black is the color. I converted the black to white, and so now I just have a bunch of white and alpha. Um, so I'm going to use that as a brush. And I'll just paint directly on this cube. So I'm going to go into Cycles. I'm going to go into Texture Paint Mode, Add Simple UVs, and Add Paint Slot. And I'll just call this splat1. And I think I'll just give it pure white as the default. Okay, so now I have a white cube. And you can see I can paint on it. Um, but it's kind of hard to get something like this if you're painting by hand. Um, so I'm going to go down to Texture, New. And I'm going to change this um, brush mapping to Stencil. Now in my texture options over here, I just need to load that, that splat texture. So I'm going to click on this, make sure I'm editing my brush, and then I'm going to click on New. Actually, I'm just going to click on Open. Um, desktop, and I need to find my splat. All right, so, so now here's the stencil, and I can move that around by holding the right mouse button and moving. I can rotate it by holding control and moving the mouse, and I can resize it by holding shift and moving the mouse. And so I'm just going to try to create some kind of cool like blood, blood splatter type thing. So I'll choose a red color and then just paint directly on the stencil. And I'll just rotate it, change my color, and do the same thing again. And I didn't like the way that one worked out. Um, if I don't like the resolution of this, I can actually go over to UV editing. And instead of using the splat um, texture that... like it, one, one was created automatically when I clicked on new texture. Um, I think I'll just create another one. New image. And I'm going to move this up to like 4096. And that'll give us much higher resolution. All right. And now to make sure that's still on the object, which it's not, um, I'm going to go over to the node editor. 
So I'm just hit, I'm hitting Control Left Arrow. I'll click on the node slot, and you can see we have this image texture, and this is what's being applied to our to our object. So I'm going to go to Untitled, which is my new texture, and now go back to default. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. And so now as I paint on this, I'll have a much higher resolution. Yeah, that looks much better. And again, to resize this, I just hold shift and right click. And I'll just throw some black in there. Alright, that looks pretty interesting. So now if I save this game object, it's not it's not actually going to save the texture. You need to make sure you go into UV editing, and for some reason the actual texture itself is um, not stored with the game object. And I just realized I'd, the way I did that was really inefficient because I'm not utilizing all of this texture space. The way it unwrapped the object, um, it only gave one little square to this face. Um, so actually I want to... No, I'll just leave it the way it is. Um, but keep in mind... Um, the way I did it was just not good. So anyway, I'm going to save this image. Save as image. Into my characters folder. And I'll just call this background splat. Go back to Unity and drop this onto the scene. And now, as I'm posing this, I have a game window open on my second monitor, um, so I can automatically see, like as I move the background around and the camera and everything, um, like I'm seeing it live from the camera's perspective. And this is what I came out with. Um, I'm not crazy about the color scheme. I like I like the black and the red. Um, I don't quite think that everything fits together, um, but I just wanted to show off this workflow. So basically, I, I created the character in Blender, I rigged the character and created the pose. I sent that over to Unity, and I just made a simple uh, mechanim character controller, which is this guy. And there's just an entry state and my animation, which I just literally, I just took that off the character, dropped it into the thing, and then dropped this controller onto the character. So that, that brought the pose over from Blender. Uh, I also created the text in Blender using the default Blender text. I converted that to a mesh, extruded it, and then sent that over to Unity. And then to create the background, I used the stencil tool and just painted black and gray and red. And then dropped that onto a plane in Unity and positioned it. Um, so again, I'm not totally crazy about this final result. Um, but I think the workflow is a lot of fun, and I hope this was useful to you guys. Um, so that's about it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.